Today we are going to look at the digital audio recording format from Sony, typically known as PCM-F1, and usually recorded on domestic beta tapes. We have a PCM-F1 encoder here, which was sold as a companion to the SL-F1 portable beta recorder in Europe, or the equivalent SL-2000 model in USA. We also have a PCM-501ES and a PCM-701ES model. Alas, we don't have the PCM-601ES, which includes a digital output connector, more of which later. Occasionally, someone might have used another video format, such as Umatic or VHS. There was an earlier PCM digital audio recording format specifically designed to work with Umatic, and we will look at that in another video. Here we're going to do a short test of a PCM digital audio beta tape. Playback is on the Sony SLC9, chosen because it had a PCM switch at the back which disables the dropout compensator. To our eyes this gives a worse picture because the machine doesn't try to hide any tape dropouts, but it's better for the PCM decoder which has its own error correction. Decoding is carried out by PCM701ES connected via analog outputs onto a Tascam SSR250N digital audio recorder. The PCM701ES has a button which configures the VU meters to display the tracking accuracy. It should read almost full scale on a perfect recording as this one is. If we adjust the tracking control away from center, we can see the bar graph dip and also the sound starts to crackle. In an ideal world, we would like to extract the digital audio data directly from the tape and record this losslessly. There was a modification to the PCM701ES by a now defunct company called Cricklewood, which can provide a pure digital output. We have found this circuit to be less than 100% reliable due to issues with the phase lock loop circuit, but it is presently working fine and connected to the digital input of a Tascam DR100 Mark II digital audio recorder. You could probably barely tell the difference between these two recordings, but it can be useful to have a lossless digital transcription. There is, however, the potential for difficulties caused by a pre-emphasis applied to the frequency response of the recording, since a de-emphasis is normally handled by the analog circuits of the decoder. A customer today brought in some PCM F1 type recordings which had been made on pneumatic tapes rather than beta. This is a non-standard arrangement, so I thought I would show you how I set about running the tapes. Initially, I ran a long video cable from the end of my studio where the pneumatic machines sit, to the PCM701ES decoder in the audio rack. Then the plan of action is to try playback first on my favourite Umatic system, which includes a professional digital time based corrector. If this doesn't work, then try direct connection to the composite video output of another Umatic deck. Finally, if that fails, I had considered trying the DMR4000 deck, which is designed for PCM work, but it's NTSC based and our tapes were recorded on a PAL machine. Let's do our first attempt with the professional time-based corrector. The monitor here shows the PCM data which appears as a pattern on a video image. So far so good, let's see what we get at the decoder. Oh dear, it's a distorted mess. The tracking bar is wandering and there are lots of errors. I don't think there's much mileage in this configuration. The time-based corrector here is likely to be doing more harm than good. Let's try another Umatic deck, with the video output feed given straight to the decoder. This particular deck has an RF signal strength meter, and it's showing a really good strong tape output, which is encouraging. What does the decoder think of this signal? Rock solid. Excellent. We will run the tapes through this configuration. There is clearly no need to fiddle with something that works so well. I hope you've enjoyed this little trip through some digital audio experiments with PCMF1. Please like, share and subscribe and I'll do some more in-depth features on other equipment in my studio shortly.